we learn all about the Kauai Sugarloaf Pineapple in a three-part series starting today on Hawaii Time. Aloha and welcome back to On Hawaii Time. If you are new to the channel, Eko Momai. At the end of the video, visit our About page and there you can learn a little bit about who we are. You can also take it a step further and go to our community page and there you can learn a little bit about my Hawaiian heritage. And hopefully, you'll consider subscribing and becoming part of the OHT Ohana. Now today, we have the pleasure of meeting up with farmer and scientist Jude Huber. And she's gonna tell us everything that we need to know about the Kauai Sugarloaf Pineapple. Now, not a lot of people realize that pineapple grows here on the island of Kauai, but as you can see around me, it flourishes. Now, if you've never had a Kauai Sugarloaf Pineapple, you've never had a pineapple. Now, we invite you to join us as we learn about this amazing fruit. And all we need you to do is to relax and unwind. You're on Hawaii Time. So I'm here with Jude. This is the Hole in the Mountain Farm. And this is where they grow the infamous sugarloaf pineapple. My name is Jude and uh, my husband's name is Paul. And we started this farm here about 13 years ago. And we have been growing sugarloaf, Kauai sugarloaf pineapple for quite some time before that, maybe 25 years total. I'm terrible with numbers, so don't, don't hold me to exact dates. I didn't have children, so I have nothing to measure by. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, my husband had a partner previous to this farm that, uh, that grew a lot of sugarloaf pineapple. Um, back then it was called Emperor's Choice. And that was because the Emperor of Japan's son was here and he had it and he said it was the best pineapple he'd ever had. And that was the only pineapple he ever wanted to have again. And so when we broke up the partnership because our partner got sick, um, we actually both went back to our old careers. I was a house painter. My husband uh, is, was a contractor. And, uh, and we, we went back to doing that. And what happened was once you have sugarloaf pineapple, you can't go back to eating yellow pineapple. It's just absolutely impossible. And, uh, and so we just put a few in the ground because we just wanted to eat them. We had no intention of going, you know, going into a business. We were done with farming. We were just going to do what we knew how to do. And previous to this farm, when you first drove into Moloa, where we are today, I think we had maybe 60 to 80 acres. Um, I'm not sure how much of that was sugarloaf, but I think about 40. And so for reference today, when we walk around the farm, about 11 acres of this 37 acre farm are Kauai sugarloaf pineapple. We, uh, we just wanted to grow some. And so we planted uh, about nine plants. And that means in about 18 months to 24 months, we had nine pineapples to eat. <laughs> and they, they were delicious. <laughs> and uh, somewhere along and then, you know, nine, we started a few more, you know. And, and what happened was about, uh, I guess it was 14 years ago when the economy tanked, nobody was building houses and they were definitely not painting them the way I like to paint houses, because I'm a perfectionist and so is my husband, which are great attributes for both of those careers. Farming, not so much a good attribute, <laughs> but it's worked for us because that's how we grow sugarloaf pineapple is we try to treat each plant like it was the only plant we had and it meant the world to us. And I know that's gonna seem crazy when you look at how many we have, but really it literally is that way. And I know that sounds very cliche, -y, but it really is. And if you ask any of my workers, they will verify that we are both nuts about <laughs> what we will do to make a good pineapple. And uh, so anyway, we, uh, when the economy tanked, we thought, you know, let's, let's not compete as a commodity. Let's grow something really special. We've got this unbelievable temperature, climate, you know, it's not the tropics here, it's the semi-tropics. We have the cool nights and the warm days and that's what pineapple loves, which is why they don't grow pineapple in hot, you know, equator kind of countries. You know, it needs to be preferably on a slope or at least where it gets a cool night. 
and hence back in the old days in Hawaii they grew pineapple on the slopes and they grew sugarcane in the flat okay. and uh, so we decided to have a go at it and uh, through some techniques of growing uh, and just a lot of learning of you know how to get pineapples to the propagate because if you have nine pineapples and you eat them and you put the tops in the ground now you have nine more and uh, and then you have the old plants and they're totally natural and because uh, plants produce suckers and slips and if you put those in the ground you can grow them we just wanted to grow it as a specialty product you know something from Kauai um, I mean pineapple is so iconic in Hawaii we thought you know it's such a marketable thing right. and uh, and we just wanted to do it the best that you could. You know, we wanted to to just do everything right about it and never ever lower the standard for what was okay. And, uh, and it worked. And after about two years of doing everything perfectly and, and, you know, hand weeding and, you know, of course it's all hand planted. Even the big corporations, by the way, are all hand planted. Really? Okay. Yep, there's no machine that plants pineapple and there's wow. no machine that picks pineapple all done by hand you're you're looking at the That's hands it. and uh and so after a couple of years you know when you're a farmer you take every penny you have and you just put it back into the farm it's just what farmers do and uh and so you don't really know if, especially when you're growing a crop that takes two years to mature you don't really know if you're making money because all the money you're making you're putting back in and mm -hmm. your farm's getting bigger and and so it's difficult to say i mean we were making our nut we were paying our mortgage and you know we were paying our our labor and insurance and things like that but it was hard to tell whether we were actually getting anywhere and finally after a few years it became obvious that we weren't getting anywhere and I told my husband because I'm kind of the numbers guy and uh and it was like 10 o'clock at night and he goes not at this hour honey we're not <laughs> reformulating our life at 10 and uh he says we'll we'll revisit this in the morning and about five o'clock in the morning he elbows me awake and he says it's 350 a pound <laughs> Now, even I almost spit my teeth out. I'm like, $25 pineapples, honey? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And he goes, what sells out first? I said, the big ones. He goes, what are we always out of? I said, pineapple. I said, simple supply and demand. There you go. And, uh, and, it, and it's not because, you know, we're going to set this price so sky high because we can do anything we want on Kauai. It's that we wanted to pay our workers a living wage. Right. And we wanted to make it so the people that worked for us didn't have to have a second job that they could enjoy the island and that they could be part of our team. And uh, we only have a few workers because we just can't afford to have very many and me and my husband still work seven days a week. But we just wanted to keep doing everything right. We didn't want to start cutting corners with how we grow the pineapple to make it less expensive. And uh, that's how we started. And uh, from 10 plants, we have 380,000 growing today, 14 years later. That is amazing. Um, these are all what they call um, mother plants. Which the mother plants. Well, in, in the sense that um, they're called the fruit crop, which okay. means that we took a top or a sucker or a slip and put it in the ground and it's going to grow a pineapple. So this is a slip, okay? And these are suckers. And they grow out of the base of the plant and we just dug them out of there the other day because they take away so that's oh my god you guys thank you you put yourselves back together so nicely <laughs> you know if you leave these on the plant if you leave the sucker on the plant they will produce another pineapple and usually they call they call that the ratoon crop not usually that's what it's called it's called the ratoon crop as opposed to the first crop which is called the fruit crop the big part, the big inducement for growing a ratoon crop is that you can get fruit supposedly in maybe 14 months instead of okay. 18 to 24, maybe 14 to 16. And uh, we thought, okay, let's do it. So we do it and, and, we, and we went big. You know, we, we had a lot of fields that we did it to. I have to say, I never really liked the idea, but my husband's the agronomist and I fight some wars, but very few, because I'm going to the map. If, you know, you don't have to know me very long to know that I won't go to the map very often, but if I'm going, you're gonna lose. <laughs> Just as simple as pie. 
you know? <laughs> and so I, and I knew we, we didn't really have any options. I just didn't like that we did it to so many fields. And anyway, it turned into a disaster. And the fruit didn't really size up. And, you know, a couple of the fields did. And by then the weeds were so out of control because you can't get in there. To, yeah. it, everything about it was a problem. So anyway, you'll see when we get over there uh, what, what those fields look like. And they're a far cry from what these look like. So how long ago did you, that were these planted? So these are about a year old, these okay. plants. And why I was pointing this one out is this plant, this main one, never mind these, we can take these back out so my husband doesn't think there were some minahoonies here. <laughs> um, this plant was one of these in a field that was over there that was one of those disaster fields that I was just talking about. Okay. And it was so big and so beautiful that we dug it out because just the way you can dig this out, we dug that plant out and we put it in the ground here because you know, it was just a nice, it was just like a Jurassic plant, you know, because when we put it in, the plants next to it were all about this tall, you know, because at some point they don't get so much bigger, they just get older, Okay. you know, kind of like people, you know, you, you you hit a certain height and that's oh, it. Sometimes you, you start going this yeah, way. Yeah, and then you can go the other way. They do that too. Oh, they're so adorable. Oh, wait, wait till we see the flowering ones. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Because <laughs> they're bromeliads, you know. Yes. Yeah, pineapples are a bromeliad, and so that's why we foliar feed them, and that's also what makes the flower so incredibly beautiful. That's also what makes it possible for us to ship them inexpensively with FedEx, because FedEx and the Hawaii Flower Shippers and Nursery Association cut a deal with FedEx. And I just happened to think of that one day when I was mentioning yeah. to a guy that sits on the board of directors for the Hefna, they call it Hawaii Flower Shippers and Nursery Association. And uh, he goes, yeah, it's too bad that you can't, you know, get the kind of deal like we have, because that's kind of cost prohibitive to ship from Hawaii. And I go, well, why not, Johnny? Pineapple's a flower. And the lights went on and he went, I'll talk to you tonight. <laughs> and he got us, he got us membership. He said, just yes. send the dues in. You are flower shippers. And, uh, and so that's how we get there. And we just pass the rate straight on to our customer. So these plants right here were planted by tourists that visited you a year ago. Yeah. So if you guys were here at the farm a year ago, look at your plants now. The, uh, they'll remember. So that was just part one of our three-part series, learning all about the Kauai Sugarloaf Pineapple. Guys, don't forget to hit subscribe, become a member of the OHT Ohana. Hit that bell so you get notifications of all of our videos that we put out specifically for you guys. And with that said, we leave you with aloha. Always remember to relax and unwind. You're on Hawaii time.